It's time for another dream catcher. My guest, Trisha Sessler, has been here a few times now. I always love to hear how she receives from the Lord. But we want to start today a little different, and it may be a little different for some of you, depending on your religious or spiritual uh, background. But she's going to share her testimony on how she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. And um, I want you to listen with an open heart if this is new to you. Trish, I know, you know, I was raised in assemblies. We, have, we were just always raised in churches that understood that that is just a prayer language and that's right. where our power comes from. But there are churches who don't and there are people watching who don't understand. So I'm glad that you have this testimony that they can hear in a way that's not threatening to them. Right. Uh, no one's coming to them and saying, hey, you need to do this. Yeah. You're just sharing your testimony. So I'm glad that you were able to do that. So I'm excited to hear it too. Right, right. Well, when we are first saved, when we first accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we know the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. Yes. And the way I like to explain that is it's like, kind of like a spark, like a pilot light on a gas stove. That's you good. know, you got a flame, but it's a little bitty flame right yeah. there, you know. <laughs> And you can leave it a flame, mm -hmm. or you can stoke it into That's a good. big fire, good. into a big flame. And in fact, yeah. the Bible even says, "Fan it into yeah, flame." I was thinking of Timothy. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. fan said. it into flame. Mm -hmm. So we can always ask for more of the Holy Spirit. Right. And uh, speaking in tongues is more of the Holy Spirit. That mm -hmm. is, um, there's two ways speaking the tongues works. It can be um, speaking in tongues for one when you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is your individual prayer language. Yes. That is your way to speak to God into His perfect will because yes. we don't know That's what right. to ask for in prayer. We That's really right. don't. But when we are speaking to God in our tongue that He mm -hmm. gives us, mm -hmm. we speak His perfect will. We yeah. pray His perfect will. Because Holy Spirit was there in the beginning. Right. When God gave us, you know, when when He formed the earth, Holy Spirit was there. It was hovering. Right. And so He knows God's will for our life. And what we're doing is surrendering our will so that he, because it is a he and not an it, <laughs> that he can speak and pray for us. And that's, that's what we're doing. Absolutely. And then there is the speaking in tongues that is for corporate, for yes. the church, for the body, yes. where there should be an interpreter for yes. that. You know, for, if you're speaking to a group, to a body, there should be someone that gift that's gifted, whether it's permanently or temporarily in that, where they right. can interpret that yeah. too. Otherwise, what good did it do? Right. Yes. Yes. And in Acts, um, you know, there was also um, where p the speaking in tongues was also where people, everyone understood in their own language. Right. So there's like right. variations of yes. it. You know, yes. and each one of them are clearly defined in the book of Acts yes. if, we, if we look about it. Yeah. Um, but when I... Um, when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, um, obviously, um, you know, I, I was praying for it. My pastor prayed with me, and we just asked for that baptism of the Holy Spirit. It says if we want it, to ask for it That's and it. receive it by faith. It's yes. as easy as that. Yes. Ask and receive it by yes. faith. So I asked for it, and... Um, I and my pastor both had sensed that there was something kind of blocking in the way, mm -hmm. and it was just a an old religious mindset that I had. And mm -hmm. I was thinking that, but yet not saying that to him as we were praying through this, and he just pretty much Holy Spirit told him what was in my right. mind, and that right. I, he was confirming that, yes. yes, this is a block. It's just mm -hmm. something that's standing in the way. Mm -hmm. And um, once we prayed for it, I went by myself to the altar alone and prayed through that and yeah. surrendered that over to God. Yes. Because it's not my religion. It's not a religion. It's a relationship. Yes, yes. So I, once I surrendered that to Him... Um, I didn't really have to think about the speaking in tongues thing. In fact, I wasn't thinking about right. it at all. I'm just <laughs> praying, and then all of a sudden, it's like I got that, like a baby learns to talk. Yeah. You know how they start making sounds first, and then after they make the sounds, then they do the words, right. and after the words come the sentences. Yes. <laughs> and it was just like, it started like that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it was just like my mouth was just moving as fast as I could go. It's like my spirit had been held 
silent all those years and finally it could talk and it had so much to say it was <laughs> woof. it was like a tidal wave That's I don't cool. know how long I was at that altar but I received you know it says when you receive the the spirit by faith that you do have an evidence of speaking yeah. in tongues mm -hmm. and it wasn't mm -hmm. like I was like okay I got to do this now you know yeah. it just it, it came like that. Yeah. And I've heard other testimonies from people where they say, well, you know, that didn't come for me for a day or two later or whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's story can be a little different yeah. there, yeah. you know. Um, but then it also says in um, Acts 19, uh, you know, Paul placed his hands on them and the Holy Spirit came upon them. They spoke in tongues and they prophesied. Right. So not thinking about that scripture at all, about prophesying and it was after that service would happen to be over with and um, church was was done there was just a few people left and my pastor asked me he said well do you feel like you've received the holy spirit and i said oh absolutely he said what did you get any evidence of it and i said i got my tongue mm -hmm. i got my tongue and i told him just what i just told you and immediately it's like holy spirit just downloaded something in me and i I turn and look and I pointed to the front right side of the sanctuary and I said, oh, and something is going to significantly happen right here in that spot. I don't know what it is, but in that spot, something significant is going to happen. And <laughs> it was you know, years later and I was ordained right there in that oh, spot. Oh, Yeah. Isn't that just awesome? The, when the Bible says the Holy Spirit is where our power comes from. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have been able to prophesy without the power of the Holy Spirit because right. he's the one who put that in your spirit for yeah. you to speak it out. And everyone's story is different. I've seen people literally come to the, offer for, the altar for salvation. Um, in a church years ago, a little painter, he was still in his little white painter outfit. He came to the altar. He was he was just broken, he was humble, he went forward and they prayed with him and he actually was slain in the spirit in that if you're not familiar with that, he just crumbled before the Lord and kind of like was in a peaceful state. And when he got up, he was speaking in a language that he didn't know and he, it was sort of like he was asleep and like he was doing this in his sleep and so when he came up, he woke up, he was speaking these words that he didn't know what they were, and he was a little embarrassed and I think a little maybe um, nervous. He wasn't sure what was going on. So I knew from that experience he didn't, he wasn't making this up. He wasn't trying for something that he saw someone else do. This was an experience that he had and that you can have. Now his experience was different than yours. You knew what you were praying for. But I believe, like you said, if you ask for it, it's yours. Now, if there's a block, what she said, the block is always in us. The block is not there. He wants you to have it. So if there's a reason that you're not having, it's usually fear or insecurity, like what if it doesn't sound right? What if I'm making this up? The doubt that the Holy Spirit, I mean, that the enemy puts in there. But if you ask, it's yours. I believe. I believe that's the word. Absolutely. And, so, and you know, instead of the doubt, how about just have your mind set on the things that you would be praying mm -hmm. for without putting that into your human words. Yeah. And I've also seen where people have spoken tongues before where they were, didn't know what they were saying, mm -hmm. but they were actually speaking a language that they did not know. Yeah, yeah. I know a friend who that happened. Her mother is Pakistani, mm -hmm. and the person in church in front of her was, the, the mother was visiting from you know, the other country, and the person in front of them in America was speaking in what they thought was tongues, and it was, mm -hmm. but it was her language, and he was speaking the gospel message in her language. Wonderful. And when she saw them, I mean, how can you, how can you refute that? How, I mean, she was like, what can you do other than become, she was saved. She gave her, herself to the, her life to the Lord. I mean, it was just no, she couldn't explain it away. And, and, right. and so he can use, and you hear stories of missionaries that, that do that, are speaking in tongues and it's their language. I would love for that to happen. <laughs> that, would be so, that would be so cool. But it's, it's about the power. And when we don't know how to pray, you just let him pray. And he prays his perfect will, like you said.
Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and there are times that, you know, I will pray in my tongue when I have prayed about something before and I feel like that, I mean, he always hears your prayer and he always sure. gives an answer whether sure. it's manifested in our physical world yet or not. Mm -hmm. um, but there are times that I will pray on a situation in my tongue instead of just praying in, 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 in my language, yes, you yeah. know, because I just feel like I, I'm praying his, well, I know mm -hmm. I'm praying his perfect will then. Because sometimes, depending on the situation, you're not really quite sure what is the right prayer? Do, how do, you know, what result? Maybe, because sometimes our desire is not his. Mm -hmm. And if I pray for my desire and he gives it to me, I might be missing out on something that he had, which was much better. For, like when Jesus said, I'm going to do this, you know, but, you know, if this cup could pass, it'd be all right, too. But still, <laughs> your will be done. And I feel like that's what we're doing is um, I don't want to pray my will, even though I really, really want it. I want his will more, even if it doesn't feel good at the time or be what I think it should be. And the Holy Spirit, when we let him do the praying, that's, what, that's what's happening. Won't you come and go to a land that's free? You see, your debt's been paid on Calvary. His blood was shed for you and me. Won't you come and go to a land that's free? God gives us the dreams. God gives us the understanding. And there's a lot of people, and you're one of them, you're watching me, that you go, no one's interpreted my dream. I'm afraid to tell it. Well, I want to give you some information. Here's the place where you can find peace through understanding dreams and visions. Till next time. Catch your dream. Catch your dream. Uh, we, we're talking about the Holy Spirit here, but there's also, also evil spirits. Oh, yes. You know, um, and we have authority, God yes. given authority over those. And I actually had um, just written something yesterday talking about that where, you know, are we, are we taking a beating spiritually right. or are we standing our ground using our God-given authority mm -hmm. against spirits? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times, you know, we, we want to complicate it. Mm -hmm. It's not complicated <laughs> it's really because not. there's power in the name of Jesus. Yes. And in Jesus' mm -hmm. name, mm -hmm. we have that authority to cast those things. Yeah. Uh, but I ask, you know, for God to show me things. You just, hey, just take the wheel, take over and just mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. me things sometimes, you know, so I can learn. Yeah. And he did in this one incident. Um, I was getting into a vehicle with some people. We were going somewhere, and there were the, the two individuals I was in the vehicle with. And pleasant day, pleasant car ride, and I bet we weren't half a mile down the road. And then all of a sudden, it was like a light switch come on. And immediately, both of them turned toward me and started verbally coming at me. I mean, just like the conversation just just switched. I mean, it had nothing to do with anything that had been spoken right. about earlier. It was just out of nowhere. Right. And I was being verbally attacked just, just like that. Wow. And I thought for myself, what just happened yeah, here? Yeah. What's, what's going on? And the Holy Spirit was like, there is, there's, there's a spirit you're encountering. Mm -hmm. This you're encountering, encountering the spirit of anger. Every spirit has a name. Yes. Okay? Yes. You know, that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. good to have when yes. you're, you're casting a spirit. And I'm like, Oh, I'm conf I'm dealing with the spirit of anger. Well, no wonder this just come out of nowhere. And, mm -hmm. and, it, and there was not even a clear topic as to what, what, what it was about. Right, right. And immediately I just felt this like holy anger rise up in me. Yeah. And it's, I w it was like I was sitting over here listening to and listening and seeing myself talk. Mm. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of anger flee. 
<laughs> and immediately it was like that light switch went off. Both individuals just mm -hmm. hushed. Mm -hmm. And you probably could have counted to three and they are changing the, the subject. Yeah. Like they had no memory of what just yeah. happened and talking to me just as pleasant and nice as I could be as if that had never even mm. took place. Yeah. We had a kind of similar situation. We had uh, someone in our church was having a good conversation with several of us. And the conversation from one of the people in this group, like you said, it, it just was like, it just switched, like, where did that come from? What are we talking about? I yeah. thought we were, how did we get here? And, and this other person, this other member of the church said, when he was looking at the person where the anger was coming from, he told us later, he said, I felt like I saw his face distort, like I was looking at something grotesque. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we realized later he had seen the spirit that had taken over this individual. Yeah. And, and, you know, the other person is seeing it and we're feeling it like, what is going on? Right. These are not, um, these aren't medical things. This is the spirit. And I believe you need to have the Holy Spirit in you to be able to be safe around that, to address it. Um, you know, you can just be, you can be in Shoney's and someone manifest into something. Right. And I just think, I think that a lot of believers are um, searching out the demonic, and I think that that's a mistake. I don't think you need to go looking for him. I don't believe there's a demon under every rock. Um, but I know that if I have the Holy Spirit in me, then I have the power that if I happen to come across it like you did, then I can stand up in the power of the Holy Spirit in and, Jesus and rebuke it. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, I feel like there's a real, um, I don't know, a push or something. I think as time is probably winding down for the for time uh, before Jesus returns, right. I think we're going to see more of that. But there seems to be a real... Um, interest um, for the demonic and maybe it's just because he's so around us and we're more aware of it but I see even believers that are getting hung up on chasing him rather than chasing Jesus mm. and if you spend too much time studying him and the enemy that's time you could be studying the Lord and so um, I just encourage you we're not asking you to be afraid of it if you encounter that, but spend time seeking Jesus. And the enemy's there. He's going to pop his head out, and we right. want to be ready. But I, I think we have to be careful where we spend our time. Our fight, the Bible says, is not against flesh and blood. It's right. against principalities right. and spirits of, of darkness and right. rulers and authorities right. of, of darkness. It's right. not against each other. Yeah. It You know, a, a spirit can come on anyone, it, you know, but... Yeah. Uh, we resist it in Jesus' name. It flees. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean that the enemy war or the spirit won't come back, right. but resist it again. The more right. we resist it, you know, right. the more they right. realize they're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's and, not doing and any good. Just as the world gets crazier as it is, um, just to have the discernment that comes from the Holy Spirit. There's a different level of of discernment. So when you're talking to someone and they're saying one thing and your spirit's going, oh, but what are they really saying? Mm -hmm. You know, you have that discernment. You have that discernment of spirit where you can go, you know, they're saying the right things, but it's from the wrong spirit. And that's right. something the, the word speaks of as well. Um, just to know, to hear that voice, listen to that voice <laughs> that's in you. And if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to go to church to get it, especially if your church doesn't understand it. You can be in your bedroom, on your knees, laying in your bed, in your living room, and you ask Him. And I tell people what helped me when I was really seeking it was to sing. Sing a song, a Christian song, and sing it in English, and then sing it again, but don't sing it in English. Because, you know, with, with singing, we're more, it feels more natural to just hum or make up a beat or something. Right. And so it feels more natural than to speak words you don't know. Singing so, in the Spirit is a so thing. It is a thing. Right. And if that's easier to get you comfortable with it, because the sound of it in my own ear from my own voice was just like, 
that sound, what is that? You know, because then the doubt comes in. But with singing, it, for me, it was just easier to accept it for me to get me past the block that I put there, mm -hmm. not that he put there. Right. So however you can get that, whatever works for you, remember, it's just like she said, babies don't start in sentences. They start with a word or a sound. And when that first baby says mama or dada, and you're so thrilled, God is just as thrilled when you say a little word in the spirit, because he knows he can give you more and more as you are open and, and trying, just try. Mm -hmm. His plans are to to prosper us, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah. That th makes me think about um, at one point in time I was renting and I didn't want to rent to me. That was throwing my money away. Right. I wanted to be investing in a home. And I'd been praying about it and uh, the place that I'd gone to rent, I said, listen, I've been praying about this. And before I sign this rental contract, I want to know that I can get out of this in six months if I can, because I, I've been praying about this and I know God's not going to put me on hold for that long, you know, Good and I, you. I just knew. And she, she says, okay. I'll let you out in um, six months if you um, feel like you need to be out in six months. So we had that deal. And so I signed the, the contract, moved into the place. And every time I'm doing dishes, I'm looking out the window at the house next door. And I'm thinking, <laughs> why is that place empty? What's the deal with this place? Why is this place empty? And I keep praying about it and, you know, for finding a home, not having to rent. And something just told me, you need to start asking about this house. You know, I didn't have a down payment, anything, mm -hmm. you know, nothing was, was lining up other than I was praying and believing. He, you know, he just told me, he said, you need to, you need to go to the bank. You know, he impressed me to go to the bank that holds the note. So I found out who held the bank that held the note and I went to the bank and talked to the loan officer and said, listen, <laughs> I have no experience. I have no money. <laughs> I have no down payment. I've got a part time job, blah, 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 all these things, but God. <laughs> so um, I had already talked about a price with a lady and I'd actually asked for a price much lower than what she wanted, just believing, and she accepted it. And, you know, he just kept telling me, you know, just keep taking these steps, I'll make a way. Keep, you know, keep taking steps and I will make a way. Long story short, I got the house so cheap that, and this is what I told the loan officer, if I never make the first payment, you can turn around and put it on the market and yeah. get every bit of your money back out of it, mm -hmm. plus the bank makes some. But I'm no risk to you. Right. You know. Right. So um, the loan officer was like, you know, you're right. You're exactly right. And not only will I do that, but I'm going to give you a loan for more than that amount so you have money to put into it and fix the house up. Yes. And made a hefty profit on it when I sold it. <laughs> Talk about favor. Yeah. Because he, because faith pleases God. Yes. <laughs> it's the only way to please him, and that's faith. Because that shouldn't have happened. No. You didn't qualify. No. He rewards faith. Right. That's I just kept praying. Was. I don't see a way, but right. do you know a way this can happen? As you say this, I think about the loan officers thinking this one was crazy. <laughs> but, but as he talked to you, you know, he was talking to the, the loan officer and, oh, and sure. whether he was a believer or not, he was moving on his heart as well to go, you know, this woman's right. She And just the fact that you were so tenacious about it, that said something to the bank officer about your, about your character in the natural. You know, whether he's a believer, I don't know, but... He um, might be now. <laughs> <laughs> he may, that may have been. That yeah. may have been what he needed. How yeah. awesome is that? Yeah, That's you never awesome. know how, you know, your experience, you right. know, and your faith being That's true. shown That's is true. going to speak to somebody. Because yeah. what I can say to you is not going to move mm -mm. you as much as what mm -mm. you're going to see happen. And even at the time, he may not have. He might have gone home thinking, oh, I hope I didn't, <laughs> I hope I did the right thing here. Uh, hey, maybe but, he was praying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because we point. don't know what was going on there. And even later, what he may have gone, you know, how the Lord might have used that. It's just, I can't wait to get to heaven for those kind of things, to right. see how did that, how did that affect someone else? And because we, it's easy for us to think this was just about me. I needed that house and I'm God's favorite and he gave me that house, but... But how did it affect the loan officer? And how did it affect the people who were selling it, the older couple? And, you know, it's just 
nothing just affects us. It just really doesn't. No, not at all. We're not he, islands. He uses other people to speak to us. He uses us to speak to other people. Not that he needs us right. for anything, right. but that is just how he chooses to operate. Right. That reminds me of a time I, I was in a church service and it was prayer time. The altars were full, the prayer team, everyone had someone they were praying with. And there was a lady that was standing in the aisle waiting for the prayer team, a prayer partner to come available for her to pray with. And the Holy Spirit just kept saying to me, I want you to go pray with her. I want you to go pray with her. And I'm like, oh, and, I, and I'm getting all these religious, you know, <laughs> ideas. I'm like, well, I'm not on the prayer team and I, I don't need to be getting up there and doing anything, mm -hmm. you know, and just all all these religious thoughts that are going mm -hmm. through my mind and I needed a tissue for some reason over my eyes or water and what, what was going on but um, just past her about three or four feet was a box of tissues and I'm like yeah I was kind of blowing off the whole Holy Spirit's telling me to pray for this girl but I'm just gonna get me a tissue <laughs> well I go to walk past her and I never felt any hands on me but the Holy Spirit took my entire body and jerked me around in front of her so fast it's a wonder I didn't get whip, whip, whiplash. Yeah. I know if somebody was looking, they'd probably see my hair go, <laughs> <laughs> just like this. Wow. But, it, you know, I told you to pray for this woman. Yeah. And, and yeah. immediately, like I said, I had no control of my body. I was like, whoosh, turned around right in front of her. Ma'am, would you like me to pray for you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I felt yeah. like Jonah in the well yeah. at that point yeah. in time. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the Lord's will is going to be done. Absolutely. Whether he uses me or he has to use the person next to me because I didn't do mm -hmm. it. But sometimes I think he nudges us because it's good for us as well. Right. But that woman needed something that you had. And, and that wasn't against my will. I yeah. always pray. Sure. Have your way. You yes. know, Make yeah. your will yeah. be done in me. Yeah. 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 I'm on the prayer team too. And because I'm on the board, you kind of feel like, you want to give someone else the opportunity. So unless he specifically says, I need you to come pray, you know, he'll point to you from the, from the pulpit. I like to, I don't want people thinking I just want to be up front because I really don't. I just soon run camera. I'm good. But sometimes that person needs what you have. Uh, and so many times, you probably no, notice this too, the person that he sends you to pray with you're praying for something that you either are still dealing with or that you have dealt with in your past, mm. something that he has delivered you from or a healing that you have received, or in my case, the spirit of fear that ruled my life. So many people come to me because they have a, they're timid or they're shy. or they, It's like I have been totally delivered from the spirit of fear. Um, God knows that. He knows who to hook you up with to pray with. Absolutely. He knows that. So we are so out of time. We could talk forever, but we're going to have to have Tricia come back so we can hear some more of her wonderful experiences. If you do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, go to your room. Do it privately. If, if it's uncomfortable, ask him. He wants you to have it. It's not a weird thing. You're not going to walk through Walmart and start talking. You have total control of it. Yes. And, um, and it's where your power comes in. And then you can really start growing spiritually. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you again, Tricia. Thank for you coming for having out. me.